Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Bernoon here with Israeli News Live. And uh, believe it or not, this is going to be a biblical message. And I think you're going to find this very interesting. Uh, I just happened to run across this as I was studying in the Dead Sea Scrolls. I was going through uh, the different uh, parshas there and where they give their interpretations on scriptural, uh, different scriptures and what they think they actually mean. And while I was doing that, I ran across, of course, uh, Hosea chapter 7. And when I ran across Hosea chapter 7, excuse me, chapter 8, verse 7, uh, very, very popular scripture. I, I've taught on this scripture before, but it made me think of a modern technology that is employed today that perhaps this is really what it was implying back uh, well, gosh, that's been almost 3,000 years ago that Hosea was, was written. So I wanted to share this with you and just, uh, you know, kind of let you think about this as well. Uh, chapter 8, verse 7, here we have it right here. For they sow the wind, and they shall reap the whirlwind. It hath no stock, the bud that shall yield no meal. If so, it be, if so, be it yield, strangers shall swallow it up. Now, I really want you to think about this, right? Kiruak uh, itzaru, okay? If they sow the wind, right? In other words, they're going to put seeds in the wind. They shall reap a whirlwind or a storm is what it's speak, speaking about. Uh, not, not like just a tornado. It's talking about a storm. All right, so if you if you put seed in the wind, okay, izahu, that's literally, and it's seeds. It's not a singular seed. It's a plural seed. It's multiple seeds. All right? If, in other words, literally, izahu, izahu, if he seeds the wind, then you're going to reap a storm. All right, but then it says, it hath no stock, the bud that shall yield no meal, and if so it be yield, strangers shall swallow it up. So it's almost as if there is a drought in Israel. Because at first I began to think of this like in the modern terms of, of cloud seeding, as we call it today, then cloud seeding creates rain. Even so, it'll even create rain in an area that there is no rain. And I began to think, especially in light of the different passages that I've been discovering, like in the Hebrew Matthew, where it speaks about the shining ones that were among the prophets or the shining ones that were in the sons of man. In other words, fallen angels or Nephilim beings that are in there. And of course, what do they do? They teach the technology that they have. And we even have in the Egyptian pyramids and hieroglyphics, you literally have pictures of planes, helicopters, what appear to be helicopters, what appear to be planes that they actually had back in that time period. So maybe it's not so far-fetched to look at the scripture here in Hosea and begin to wonder, uh, did they have a cloud seeding as well? Literally, that's what they talk about if you take it literally. Let's back up to verse 6. For from Israel is even this, the craftsman made it, and it is no God, yea, the calf of Samaria shall be broken in shivers. For they sow the wind, and they shall reap the whirlwind, or they shall reap a storm. Notice that, though. What is it? Verse 6 is, the craftsman made it. It's no God. Yea, the calf of Samaria shall be broken in shivers. In other words, their God that is made out of clay is not who makes this rain, but rather a craftsman who is sowing the wind is also reaping a storm. It hath no stalk, the bud that yield no meal. If so, it yields, strangers shall swallow it up. So in other words, the ground is not producing the way it should, but if it does, well, the enemy is going to swallow up all what grows. Israel is swallowed up. Now are they become among the nations as a vessel where it, wherein is no value. For they are gone up to Assyria like a wild ass alone by himself. Ephraim hath hired lovers. 
but it seems to be very fascinating, this type of technology. Let me show you what we're talking about when we talk about cloud seeding, a very interesting video right here. Now, this is Dubai. Dubai was using electrical energy to create rain, but the uh, gentleman in the bottom right-hand corner is going to explain cloud seeding a little bit, too, uh, just to show you the different types of technology that are employed. Now, I'm very much familiar about the electrical charge that creates the rain as well. Listen into this. Okay, so we talked about this last week, and now we're going to do a, a deep dive with Davo. Dubai, Dubai mm -hmm. is making it rain in a sweltering desert by zapping clouds with electricity using drones. Fascinating, isn't it? So much to ask, but let's just let's take it and then we'll we'll okay. do a few questions. Before we talk about what's happening in Dubai, let's talk about cloud seeding in general because a lot of people I don't think understand what cloud seeding is. And this has been going on for decades, by the way. This is not something that's brand new. Literally since um, 1947. What cloud seeding is, it involves using aircraft or drones or even some cannons to push silver iodide up high into the clouds. Why silver iodide? Because what that, that has the same crystallized structure as ice. So once it gets up into the clouds, it starts to accumulate ice on it and these large raindrops, which helps, especially in a you know a cloud mass that's not really going to rain, it helps to bring rain and especially snow down. So it works. It does work marginally. But the problem with silver iodide through the years has been this is that they, they feel it could be harmful to aquatic life, okay? okay? So over in Dubai, which is what you're seeing here, they took it a different step, and what they basically did, they had a fleet of drones that flew up into cloud cover, and they, they used electrical charges to force water droplets to combine into larger ones. So not silver, not cloud seeding no, as we No, have. no, they're not using the traditional silver iodide. But they created the rain anyway, right? The environmental right. aspect of that, okay? So cloud seeding is what it is traditionally called. And of course, back in um, 1947, the first cloud seeding that was ever done was done by the U.S. military. And it was on a hurricane called King Hurricane, a hurricane that they thought was going to go back out to sea as it crossed over the southern part of Florida. They seeded this storm after it crossed Florida. Uh, but lo and behold, the storm turned and came back and crashed right into uh, uh, southern Georgia there, uh, causing also Florida a tremendous amount of havoc. Six foot of water came upon the state as, as a result. Some people tried to blame the cloud seeding the military for that, but uh, there have been other storms that have taken the same type of track. So probably it wasn't the cloud seeding itself, but it did create a tremendous amount of more rain as a result of the cloud seeding. And I find it fascinating when you think about cloud seeding because of the mere fact that uh, that is exactly what we see. We talk about it, sing about it, and definitely. Uh, we see biblically as this cloud seeding. Uh, so, you know, very, very fascinating. Harp, uh, they're also speaking about uh, creating storms and things like that. Another area to steer storms with harp. But that cloud seeding is a traditional thing there. And I cannot help but believe that this may be the very thing that was being spoken of in Hosea chapter 7. You know, what's interesting, though, is the government also does a lot of this investigative type of work. They try to see what type of hidden things are written in, in biblical passages uh, to see what type of technologies that were actually employed back thousands of years ago. It's so one reason why I kind of dig a little deeper myself as I look at scriptural passages like this one here in Hosea, because you just can't help but wonder, could that have been what was meant by this passage? And again, I've taught on Hosea chapter 8, verse 7 here before, and uh, completely different uh, insight on this. And, and I don't detract from the insight that I taught on originally, uh, you know, I, but I, I can't help but wonder if there was, there may, may not be something to this, especially with some of the things I've been discovering over in the Hebrew Matthew. And I'll continue to to work on the Hebrew Matthew as well, and also in the Dead Sea Scrolls, because the Dead Sea Scrolls just have some amazing insights. Anyhow, I'm Steve Benoon. You're listening to Israeli News Live. Going to be doing a message for Patreon here in just a little while after I get through making a phone call to Dr. Thorpe, who you guys have got to see. And by the way, Brand New Tube is back up and running. 
And also, Yana has been doing some very interesting, um, uh, uh, she's doing the email campaign now, uh, what do you call it, news emails or whatever you want to call those updates, but it's over on iConnectFX.com. That's where she's able to do it. It's the only place she can do those types of newsletters that are uncensored. So definitely go to iConnectFX.com and subscribe because if you're subscribed to iConnectFX.com, you will get the newsletter. And believe me, we have gotten a tremendous amount of response from her letter, uh, her first one she just did a few days ago. Um, in fact, if you guys get on up over there and subscribe, I think we have a little over 4,000 subscribers there. I'll resend that letter out to you guys so that you can get the one that was sent out just recently. I'll send it out again uh, just so that you can hear what was said there because the information is very powerful. Uh, I think you would love to be able to see that and that's going to be the way to do it. So go to iConnectFX.com forward slash Israeli News Live. Subscribe to our channel there and uh, get on board. God bless you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for the support of, your, of, of, of this ministry.